Hey guys, it's Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. So today I'm going to be sharing the worst products I tried in 2018. Yesterday I posted my best of 2018. This time it's time to be a little bit less positive than usual. I will say there's only a handful of products that I have in front of me. I think I generally do a pretty good job researching products before I purchase them so that I know usually I have a good idea of how I will feel about the product before I buy it because I like to read a lot of reviews. Um, but there were some products in 2018 that I tried that just were just bad. And so I wanted to share this with you. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. So the first product I want to mention is the Physician's Formula Spotlight Illuminating Primer. I feel like I've heard nothing but good reviews about this. This did not work for me. The reason why I just don't like this is because I feel like it makes whatever foundation I put on top of it look bad. I've tried it with several different foundations and I feel like um, I'm wearing it actually today underneath my foundation because I wanted to give it like one last chance and I'm wearing it under the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation and I feel like more often than not when I when I wear this it just makes my foundation look like separated, it makes it look more dry in certain spots which is weird because it's supposed to be an illuminating primer especially around my nose today I noticed like it just made the foundation kind of look separated it didn't blend into my skin, it didn't melt into my skin the way it would if I had just not worn this primer at all. Um, I feel like it makes my foundation look even worse. I've tried it with a lot of different combinations of like brushes versus sponges and like different foundations. I feel like the best luck I've had with it has been when I've used it with a sponge, when I've blended in my foundation with a sponge on top of it, and I feel like the foundation that it works okay with is the Physicians Formula Healthy Foundation, which was actually one of my favorites for 2018. And I feel like this works okay with that foundation, but I don't feel like it really enhances anything. It does add a little bit of glow, but I feel like it doesn't really help my foundation look any better. In fact, it usually makes my foundation look worse than it otherwise would. So this is... This is just not... I, I just haven't been able to get it to work for me. I'm actually going to be using this just as a body product from now on, most likely. Um, I'll just probably like mix it in with my body lotion just so I can get use out of it because I did spend my hard-earned money on it. Um, even though it's a drugstore product, it wasn't a cheap drugstore product. This is... I think this retails for $12, so it's not cheap. I do plan on at least using it, getting some sort of use out of it, but I will say that I have liked it when I've mixed it with my foundation. So instead of wearing it as a primer, just kind of mixing it into a foundation to make it a little bit more sheer and luminous, that is the way to use it, but I don't know. Like, for those of you who do like this primer, what do you use it with? Because <laughs> I would really like to know. I feel like I just haven't had good luck with it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I was disappointed. I had high hopes. I've heard this is a dupe for the Becca Backlight Priming Filter, and now that primer from Becca has been on my wish list for a long time, and now I'm hesitant to try it because so many people have said it's like an exact dupe of this, and if I don't like this, then I don't want to spend like $50 on the Becca one or however much it costs. So I don't know. I don't know about that. That just was the disappointment to me. The next dud this year, this wasn't like a huge loss in terms of like the amount that I spent on it and I had a feeling it wasn't going to be great, but I really wanted to try it. It's only 99 cents so I felt like I wasn't, there wasn't too much to lose. This is the Wet n Wild, um, one of their glitter single shadows. But this one looked different than some of their older glitter shadows. This one is in the shade Nude Comer. It looks like a beautiful rose gold and it's kind of just like a metallic glittery cream shadow. I know I've heard in the past that their like glitter singles are not good, but I wanted to give this one a try because this was a new one and it looked like a slightly different texture and formula and consistency, so I thought I would just give it a try, but it's just, it doesn't have any staying power whatsoever. Um, it is a beautiful color, but it's just, this formula just is kind of, it's almost like a gel, like a sticky gel, and so it just kind of creases and fades within a very short time. Um, even if I wear a primer underneath it, even if I set it with a powder shadow, it just doesn't stay in place. Um, so kind of a bummer because it is such a beautiful color and I, I wanted it to work but it just I wouldn't recommend that. I would stay far away even though it's only 99 cents I don't even feel like it's worth that. Unless you're just gonna put it on and then like take a picture and take it off. <laughs> like it'll probably stay in place for like a solid five minutes so. The next dud this was just this was just bad. <laughs> this is from I feel bad I feel bad that this is such a bad product because I, I, you know, I want to say good things about this brand. 
But this was from the brand Lauren Brooke Cosmetics. I tried a bunch of products from them and most of them that I tried I did not end up liking. Um, but this one was by far the worst. This is their liquid liner in the shade Royal Purple. Um, this is kind of just a normal liquid liner type of packaging and it has not a brush tip but more of like a hard felt tip. But this is just, it's like painting with watercolor on your eyes. Um, it's a pretty color, it's a nice, it is like a royal purple, and it just, it, it even smells like paint. Like artist paint, you know, like the kind of paint that you would paint onto a piece of paper or something. It just, it goes on very thick, but also very streaky and watery. It's a weird combination, it doesn't go on like an opaque line at all, and even as you build it up, it just kind of streaks on top of itself. And it doesn't have good staying power, like if your eye waters at all, it's gonna disappear. So I just think they should stop selling this because until they can improve the formula because I, I don't think it's, I just, it's not a good eyeliner at all. I don't see how this could work for anyone. Um, maybe some of their other shades work better, but I, I guess I won't be finding out because I don't want to waste more money on it. So that was disappointing. Yeah, a lot of the Lauren Brooke products that I tried just <laughs> were, most of them were just kind of like, eh, you know, but this one was, it just really stood out as like, probably the worst liquid liner I've ever tried. So, sorry, like I wanna say good things about the brand, but I feel like I just, uh, I don't know. I love their blush, I will say that. I do love their blush. Okay, another couple of products that I tried this year, these are both like complexion products. I don't have them with me because they have been decluttered long ago, but before I decluttered them, I specifically wrote them down. Like I was like, okay, Sarah, next time you do like a product regrets video, like worst products or products I regret buying, you need to make sure to mention these because these <laughs> were not good. The first one was from the brand Tear Mare, and I've, you know, talked about a handful of their products here and there. Way back earlier this year I did like a brand focus, like brand spotlight video, and I tested out a bunch of their products and reviewed them. The worst one <laughs> that I tried from them was their foundation. It was their fluid foundation. It, it looked promising. It was in a really nice like frosted glass bottle, very expensive. Um, of course I got it on sale, but full price it is very expensive as are all of their products. That foundation was probably one of the worst foundations I've ever tried. It had simultaneously had no coverage whatsoever. No coverage. It was like I was just putting like a moisturizer on my face, but it was super blotchy. Like no matter, you know, how evenly I tried to apply it, no matter what kind of tool I used to apply it, it just went on looking so blotchy. Like I would have like spots on my face. And part of the problem might have been because the shade was slightly too dark for me, but that really shouldn't matter. <laughs> like it should still look like one color on my face, you know? But no, it was like splotchy and no coverage at all. So it was just like, not only was it useless, it was, it was bad. Like it made my skin look bad while offering no coverage. So. That was a really bad foundation. I did declutter it very soon after that review video because I was like, I, I don't need this. Like, I don't need to keep using this because <laughs> it's just not good. So that was a disappointment. The other like foundation type product that was a major disappointment to me this year was the Andalou Naturals 1000 Roses CC Cream. That I did a like review and wear test on also way earlier this year. I can link that if you'd like to hear more about it or see more about it, but that CC cream, first of all, it smelled very strongly like roses, which is like, I mean, that's like a personal preference thing, but personally I'd rather not have like a ton of basically perfume in my foundation. But the main problem with that was one, it only came in two shades and they were both like light to medium shades. I got a shade that looked like it would be a pretty exact match for my skin tone. And when I first put it on, it was, but it oxidized like five shades darker than my actual skin tone. I couldn't wear it <laughs> unless I wanted to look like an Oompa Loompa. So yeah, that was just bad. I had to declutter it. I was disappointed because it, you know, it had really nice packaging. I loved, you know, Andalou Naturals. I have, you know, enjoyed a few products that I've tried from them, but that CC cream. Also, I really don't understand what the problem is with brands only offering like BB and CC creams in like two shades because, I mean, I get that it's supposed to be like more of a sheer coverage product. So it, in theory, it should work for a wider range of skin tones, but you still have to at least offer like one deep shade. 
Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about that, but that CC cream, I would also recommend staying very far away from it because unless the shade looks like four shades too light for your skin tone, and you have like a warm complexion, maybe it'll work for you because you know it, it might oxidize to match your skin tone. But I feel like for the majority of people, like 95% of people, it's not gonna work for it. So okay, the last disappointing product of 2018. This is a hair product. Um, this is a dry shampoo. I feel like I haven't really talked about this much, but this, the more I've used it, the more I just really don't like it. This is the Hemp's herbal instant dry shampoo. I had very high hopes for this because one, it was almost $20, and two, I know I've heard nothing but good things about like Hemp's body care products, and I had a lotion from them once that I loved, so I was like, okay, this is probably gonna be good because one, it's expensive, and two, it's from a brand that I feel like I have a positive image of in my head, right? So this is just supposed to be a dry shampoo. It says shake well, spray at roots, and throughout dry hair. Gently work product through hair with your fingers to evenly distribute. So just like a basic dry shampoo. First of all, this smells so strong. It smells like one of those perfumes that was really popular in like 2007. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a very fruity perfume. I'm sure that perfume has a name. Like I'm sure that's like, I don't know. Is it like juicy something? I don't know. It smells like very strong, just like fruity. Which, you know, that's again, that's like a personal preference thing. I usually don't mind scents if they're like nice pleasant scents but this scent I just it's just so strong it just it even lingers in my hair after I've washed my hair looking past the smell it also just doesn't do anything um as far as like absorbing oil it really doesn't and it says that it's supposed to re refresh and absorb which is like the the claims of the product it doesn't absorb oil I will say that it does add volume it will add volume to your roots so if you're just looking for like a volumizing product and you don't mind a very strong smell and you want to pay like $20 it does have a lot of product in it it's seven ounces so it does last a long time but it adds volume but it really doesn't do anything in the way of actually what a dry shampoo is supposed to do which is absorb oil make your hair look clean at least for the next, you know, maybe 12 hours. It really doesn't do that. I feel like it doesn't help anything. And I feel like because it's so strongly and heavily fragranced, I feel like it actually irritates my scalp because I do have some scalp issues, like flaky issues with my scalp. And I don't think this helps at all. If, if anything, it makes it worse. So this, it's something that I will probably use up because I, I, I only have like this much left. There's this guy who, he must live in my apartment building, but he goes outside and he coughs so loud and so like it just has the most disgusting sound that's another disappointment of 2018 is that guy's coughing like, okay so those are the disappointing products of 2018 the worst of 2018 um only let's see that was only six things so only a handful of things um versus i think you know it was probably double that number in my best of 2018 so you know I'm, I'm glad that at least it was it was a very small collection of products <laughs> that were bad enough to include in this video. But let me know if any of these products you've tried and you've loved them, or if you've found a way to make them work in a way that you really like and you find useful, because I would love to make these products work for me. Yeah, I mean, well, the two that I decluttered, I guess that's not gonna happen, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what your most disappointing product of 2018 was, because it's nice to kind of be warned ahead of time so that I don't go and waste my money and vice versa. Hopefully this kind of helped you guys know which products to maybe stay away from. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, I hope you will subscribe to my channel. I will also link my best of 2018 video in the description box if you missed it and you'd like to hear a slightly more positive <laughs> video after this. So anyway, that's all for today. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.